Hey everybody, uh, that's been a while, hasn't it? In front of you, me, us, everybody here is a Thrustmaster T2 wheel and pedal set gaming sim racing thing from uh, the mid-ish, mid-90s, so it's quite old. I got it in surprisingly reasonable condition secondhand from the Dutch eBay equivalent, aka Marktplatz. So you've learned something. And what's the plan? Well, reason is Grand Prix Legends. You may have heard of it. Very shiny. Uh, it's a... Uh, yeah, in focus. It's almost in focus. And just as being almost in focus, it was almost the perfect sim back in 1998. So 20 years ago. Featuring Formula 1 cars from the season 67. So basically a cigar with 400 horsepower flying, literally flying at the Nürburgring. It was amazing. It was the best. It was clearly better than sliced bread. And it was amazing. So I want to play that again. And I did manage to install it successfully. But playing it with a modern rig is just insane. You shouldn't be doing that. It should be played with ERA equipment. I got this and we're going to take it apart. And I'll upgrade it to USB at some point. So I can use it with my actual like modern PC because this thing had a uh, game port 15 pin connector and they have been long since uh, phased out on computers so let's take it apart see how it's constructed inside how good bad ugly or well we might invent some new terminology to describe the mediocre controls we had to deal with in the in the late 90s all right let's uh, let's get right into it let's start with the uh, steering wheel a bit of an overview first here it is um, yeah it's uh, obviously not force feedback at all it's got no feedback other than a sort of a bungee cord which kind of moves it back to center it's very light it gets a bit stiffer at the end and we have about well what is it it's, it's a bit like it doesn't really have a hard end stop. It feels a bit scary to uh, to force it to the end, but we've got about 250 degrees of total rotation, I think. A couple of buttons here and a nice little sort of attempt at a sh sequential shifter that has absolutely no feel or feedback whatsoever. But that was just what it was like. Um, it mounted to your desk with these like that's a nice little sort of side view there um, table clamps here eh, eh. camera skills fail help help Whoa. I'm obviously a, uh, a YouTube pro so you see those dangly bits here you could tie it down to your table and it's got some suction cups that are about as useless as you think they are to keep it all in place on your desk it was quite terrible really not very good at all the steering wheel is held on with one screw and it's not on a metal shaft or anything it's uh, plastic so let's get that off first <laughs> we can get to it oh it's very loose it's probably sort of randomly forced into plastic there so we got one of those sort of very coarse threaded screws for there now that means the wheel probably comes off there we are and that's the wheel shaft <laughs> plastic terrible material for a, a, sh a shaft it does seem to be some sort of a bronze bushing in there actually which i didn't remember and that screw where is the camera yeah sorry about that i'm not really a youtube focus hero it's a little bit of sort of self-tapping thread in there where this uh this screw went in and that sort of holds the wheel in and since it's keyed so it's got a flat top matching with the like the key there's a hole which is not round all the way in there so that makes it position positionally somewhat secure but not very good so 
Now that we've got that off, tiny wheel, fairly solid, that's not too bad, all plastic of course, but yeah, you can make do with this, that's not, not the worst. All right, let's go ahead then. See if we can destroy this thing. Uh, sorry, keep it in one piece. Oh, that's uh, a lot of threads in there. Some spacers. Okay, that's one of the table clamps. I guess that's... All right. The other one is actually metal threaded insert in, er, inserts in the wheelbase, so that's not terrible. Uh, now for... Uh, well, there are quite a few screws in there. I'm not exactly sure which ones I'll have to undo. Well, let's just... Is there anything in there? No. Okay. Thankfully. If, if you're sort of a sim racer, you're 20-something years old and you completely skipped the non-force feedback game port sort of era of gaming, uh, well, you haven't really been missing out because the game port, like with, with USB, everything is plug and play and things tend to work fairly well. The game port, I think, was like a technological oddity uh, part of computers, personal computers since as early as the mid 80s, I think with the original PC, 4 megahertz, 4.7 megahertz, you could get a game port and it had sort of a weird way of accidentally being able to read the position of some joysticks. Uh, potentiometers, it wasn't really designed to do a, a great job at it. And I don't know which screws I'm about to, if I need any more. They are all the same length though, that's so far not terrible. Oh, okay, that did something. I think we've got the... It's so light, it's incredibly light. <laughs> there we are. Well, that's the amazing all metal carbon fiber cover and here we have the insides of this thing wow holy crap that's there's nothing in here it's all plastic i kind of recall this to be partly metal but no it's it's definitely not heavy metal at all so yeah we have a pointy thing I kind of do have a pointy no let's not go there so we have a potentiometer here sensing the rotation we've got a sort of a support beam here for the shaft these are the end stops which kind of surprising actually they're just like pieces of tubing over a, a bolt and I think the internal mechanism comes into contact there. Let me just put the wheel back on so we can actually rotate this. How does it go on? Hang on. Be right back. There we are. So as I turn this... Eh, you see that? I can't quite reach it with, with my hand, but you see that plastic bit getting off awkwardly close to the red sort of tubing that's in there. So that's the end stop, which is kind of interesting. I still use this approach uh, in, in my pedals actually and in, in other parts. And what gives it this wheel the resistance is a bungee cord. It's very black, so it's, it might be a little tricky to, uh, to see, but you can probably tell if this thing, I don't know if you get it anywhere close to focus, but in here there is this bungee guard, it's very sort of rudimentary, and 
just by turning the wheel it gets progressively harder which tells me you're over stretching the bungee cord and i remember this as well after a just a week or, or so of use, the bungee cord would have been stretched out and doesn't really give you any resistance anymore. Uh, because it's effectively just a poor design. That's all there is to it. So it's very simple. This bungee cord is being sort of stretched as you turn it. There are some, some, some little rollers in there. I really don't know how close my camera is able to focus. If it even see the roller on the top there the shiny thing and you just stretch out that bungee cord anyway that's the the, the the mechanism quite terrible if i may say so i think we can get the whole thing out because there are some uh thingies in the corner some nuts there so here on, on the top and on the bottom and on the other side as well too so we can get the whole steering thing out if we need to we, we may not really need to do that, but we probably can. So that's the steering wheel. It's super, super simple and kind of half as does the job, but it's, it's a plastic shaft. I don't know who came up with that. It is quite terrible. And the potentiometer there, I don't know if it's forced in there or not. Um, if it's even like working properly, we'll have to check that later because they weren't known for uh, their high quality. There's even a, a little, like a part in there, like a resistor or something there. So, hmm, what's happening there? We'll have to check. Very, very rudimentary. Lots of wires here. Last thing to look at is the shift. Uh, let's get the wheel off again. So most of the weight of this thing is in the wheel. Uh, the shifter, it is super simple. For now, actually, I'm not even... It's it, it literally has absolutely no feel whatsoever. But, ah, I'm curious. Let's get it out anyway. Because we can. Yep. The amount of... The lack of hair and, and, and human and animal remains in this thing considering its age is, is, is <laughs> positive. This probably unscrews. I hope so anyway. I'm randomly pressing the focus button hoping some of what you see will be half in focus. Yeah. When I got this wheel, um, the game I played with it was Grand Prix 2 by uh, Geoff Cremant, Formula 1 uh, game, uh, which didn't play as well with the keyboard as the first installment in the series, Grand Prix 1. <laughs> and with the wheel it, it felt much better and you could do without steering help and stuff like that. Okay. Let's What's going on here? Yes, okay. That's something. Hang on. It's somewhat off. But not proper wise. Oh yeah, something's happened. Ah, I get the feeling this is not, it's not liking what I'm doing to it. How does this... Okay, yep. That's our knob. Wow, that's the... Ah! Not quite anti-gravity, but still not a lot of weight in this knob. It's like a one inch knob. Now I can get this off. Theoretically. <laughs> This is hilarious, so this is the... I 
think is sort of in focus anyway there's a little bungee cord in here which has absolutely no stiffness left in it whatsoever probably never had a lot and that sort of keeps the shaft what am i fingering uh in place makes it return but it's that's terrible there's really no resistance whatsoever now yeah this doesn't seem like a good idea there are some wires entangled in there you can see there is uh, if i zoom out i might be able to get a closer look in there i'm just hoping it's somewhat in focus so there is the still has some resistance in it squishy squishy sounds and there are buttons in there you can actually see here the shape of a sort of a, a little tactile switch <laughs> without the tactile bit it's just a switch so yeah it's in there it kind of works but it's super super basic but yeah that's the shifter let me just put that back together before I misplace all the parts yeah see I can operate the camera almost Ooh, some goose come out So that's the shifter. It's quite bad, really. Oh, don't tighten it too, too hard. It doesn't seem to like that. The shifter we can just use again because it's just two buttons wired. And when I do the conversion to USB, they will hook straight up to the Leo Botnar board that I'll put in here. So that's why I didn't really have to take it apart completely. I'm not so sure about the potentiometers. I think we only saw two wires coming out of it and I'm not sure if that works with the Leo Botnar board. It acts as a voltage divider and you need the, all three wires connected. So we probably have to rewire at least some of the potentiometer wires and stuff. And another possibility is that the potentiometer is shot. This was absolutely terrible back in those days with the game port technology being absolutely horrible at providing a smooth signal you would get like jitter in your wheel position after just a week of, of, of use yeah hindsight i mean this the nostalgia is uh severe but the quality of the products then compared to what we have now just look at what we have here and compare it to your modern Thrustmaster entry level actually pretty decently functional steering wheel and pedal set it's if anything, a lesson in what we've come to in 20 years is uh, is quite something. So yeah, this, this potentiometer only has two wires connected. Uh, we'll have to make sure that wiring makes sense when we hook up it up to USB later. Well, that's a look at the steering wheel part. Not a lot to it. I'll put it back together later. Uh, now for the pedals, which I've buried under all the other steering wheel bits. The pedals. The first ones to come with a 200 kilo load. So no, no, not these ones, no. Pedal set. What about that, beauty? What's about this then? What is what's happening here well these are sort of very strange double hinged pedals so you have the top bit that's very rigid <laughs> sort of springing rotating here and then it also presses down we're actually fairly smooth that's fine and the reason for that double spring bring here is that I guess you could have like comfortable foot angle here and and not press on the edge and you would actually press on the whole thing so that's that's not terrible but it's very odd and doesn't have anything to do with like a race car 
pedal set. Throttle is fairly smooth. Brake is quite a bit harder actually, that's, so there is a difference. Uh, these were set up to have a single axis, I, f I recall, quite sure. So you wouldn't do, you couldn't do braking and throttle at the same time. It was they share an axis in game. So if you press both pedals fully, eh, nothing would happen. The output would be zero. It is fairly substantial. So this is metal. It's a metal plate on the bottom. Uh, that's not too terrible. Sort of a inspection hole. I don't know if we we need that to come off and the actual metal bits here as well uh, on the side where the construction of the, the arms of the pedals very thin if you look at it from this angle but the forces required are so low that it's pretty much pretty much fine and you can see the the second spring here uh, well you can't eh. see that's a little torsion spring and there's, I think, another torsion spring inside. So, let's take this one apart, see what we have. I'm assuming just the ones in the corner. I really don't know. Let's just... Uh... And the obvious question is, Niels, look, there's a free spot for the clutch pedal, which never, I'm, as far as I'm aware, never got sold, never was made, didn't exist. But yeah, there is a place for it. This is a bit weird. It's very, very close together. So given that it's only a two pedal set, why didn't they move the brake over to this side? Would have been a lot more comfortable. Turning it over though. Frame, frame, left, right. Yeah, mi mirror. I don't know. My skills in, with this are on the poor side. Uh, scratch my table. Right. This... Just a couple of screws. These are different. Is this enough to get... In fact, I'm quite sure we will never be able... Well, we might be able. Eh, we'll see if we can actually get it off. That hasn't really helped, so let's just undo more screws. This is a bit eh, in there, good and proper. Okay, that's a pretty long, a long screw. This seems to have been opened before, or is it just a the assembly done? In China, we actually have a date code. I feel like Dave Jones now, EV block. We do have a date code, uh, possibly anyway. Of uh, 96 09, so 1996, September 7th ish. Possibly. Makes would make sense if that's the date. <laughs> Remember to buy a cordless screwdriver, Niels. That's a good idea. Uh, some movement in there, but we probably need the other screws. Yeah, it's definitely coming loose now. Same length, always good to check, you never know. Sometimes designers put different size screws in every conceivable... Jeez, it's a bit... Hang on, I'm tired of this shit. It's about as crap as uh, the, the pedal set actually, so that, that's fitting. Uh, what will this be? No, 
not this one. I guess that'll work. Where's my finger majiggy? Bump. Yes. Should have done this earlier. Oh, ah, my mic. I'm standing. Ah, it's all collapsing. Sitting on. Sorry. Sorry about that. Cannot operate tools. Oh, that helps. Some things came apart, yeah. I think you have lift off. Okay. We are sort of in. We have to make sure we don't pull this cable strain relief thing with it. And this might just sort of not come out. Are you see? Okay, if I press them. And I sort of just about. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, we have another high quality pure carbon fiber pedal cover. Just uh, injection molded. It's oh, fairly, you know, okay. That's the job. But then more interestingly, we have the pedals here. Ooh, some stuff has come out, but this is, to my surprise, there is very little crap in here. For these are just second hand and I just, you know, you expect a world of crud and, and, and cat cats and other small farm animals to have found their way inside. But no, this is uh, clean. Not bad at all. Pretty good. How does this mechanism work? Again, it's not the most complicated thing in the world. Some potentiometers, there is like a little, uh, which one are you looking at? Actually, I don't know. Let's do it the other way. Eh? Nice. So there's a little cogwheel here on the potentiometer. Potentiom potentiometer. And then when I press the pedal, there's a like a, a bunch of teeth on the pedal. So you get like a bit of a gear ratio and you get a bit more rotation on the pot the potentiometer. That's actually a neat design. And the end stops of the pedal, you can see they kind of do what Logitech does with their uh, G25 pedal. So here on the front, it just bumps up against the metal and then it lets go and then at the back, if you can see it and if I have got the manliness, yeah, you can just about see that. It's quite heavy. I should not have done this with the brake pedal. So the end stop is just this, this bit here bumping into the metal. Very simple and it's all being held into place with a or held into place coming back to you with a torsion spring that you can see in there and these were very prone to breaking they did that a lot just not a good design if you, you have to make sure your windings are if it deals with continuous rotation like this for for a year and it typically didn't i recall sven uh my uh, business partner at Heusingfeld saying his even arrived broken. So yeah, very simple. Although this is a metal, a metal base. And the reason why they have this cover plate on the back, I think is obvious to me finally as well. Because there is actually uh, stuff going on. Focus. Yeah. So this is what it's, covering because these things are are like metal from the base it's being bent vertical which are the supports for the, the pivots for the main pedals so that is metal it's not super thick but it's for the time it was more than adequate and it worked quite well so yeah i think that's about it that's a brief look into the thrustmaster t2 steering wheel pedal set as i said um 
I'll um, go do a USB upgrade and hopefully be using this with some old games uh, period style. Thanks for watching. I'm back. Uh, moved house. Good stuff has happened. So thank you for watching, guys. More of this stuff, hopefully, in the next months. Bye-bye.